and welcome to a brand new episode of the Wooly Thistle Shopcast. I'm your host Corinne, this is your co-host Maggie and we're here to talk about all things Wooly Wool and show you some things we've got in the shop but before that, how are you doing? I'm good. Yeah? I'm good. Did you have a nice weekend? We recorded this on a Monday so did you have a nice weekend? I did have a nice weekend. Um, our oldest is home from school for her spring break. Oh lovely. So or is it lovely? Is it lovely? It is lovely. Yeah good. I love having them home um, <laughs> and actually she cooked dinner last night so oh she my. can stay as long as she wants. Yeah. Um, so what did she cook? Um, we she just put together a bunch of leftovers and made burritos. Yeah, nice. Um, that's which that's is creative. Good and easy, and yeah, um, and you yeah. didn't have to do it, I which is really nice. It, yeah. You have two kids in college now. I have two kids in college now. One still at home, um, in eighth grade, and yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, different, um, different time of life now. New a, chapter. Yes, it definitely feels like a new season. Yeah. So. And um, usually they come home at the same time, but their breaks didn't line up. Hmm. So it's kind of nice to just have one. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Yeah. Good. So it was good. Lovely. And you? I, uh, I had a weekend at home. The weekend before we were in New York City again, I took my kids down to New York for their school break, which was a blast. We went and saw Hamilton and everything. It was brilliant. Um, but this weekend, yeah, quiet weekend at home, which was nice. I did a lot of knitting, um, sort of trying to figure math out because I'm doing a, a sweater design that is inspired nice. um, and I'm I'm excited to get that going so I did a lot of sort of not test knitting but just mathy trying to make it work knitting okay um, so nothing to show but it's all here and I want to make it go from here out there into the world I'm really excited about it I think it's going to be lovely great yeah that's fun and I'll be using my one of my favorite yarn brands Rama because I just love Rama and I haven't knit with it enough lately so it'll be in the strict garden though this is going to be a nice is this what this, this is what this I forgot is. that yeah. exactly just look at that definition yeah it's beautiful yeah so for for those who haven't seen this before this is the Herne cardigan um from the book Sark by Kate Davies yes um, and it's knit in Rama Strip. Have so. you knit anything else from that book yet? No, not yet. Like I know I've, you had I've been going aspirations. Through, I do. I like flipping through it. I really could knit everything in there. Yeah, I remember you saying. Um, yeah, it's it's um it's it's on the to do list. There's <laughs> lots of there's lots. We never of get to the, the end of that list. rainbow, but it's it's really a fun pursuit, though, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I find myself dreaming half the time about all the the knitting. I yeah, I did that on Saturday do. morning. I got out my I got out a few different books out of my knitting library. And yeah, I just kind of gave them a flip through. To nice. Get a little bit inspired. And, yeah. Yeah. Just did you land on it? Um, I did actually. So one of my whips. So I had to. I was. It's March now. We're in March. Uh, I did finish my February socks. Um, I can put a photo mm -hmm. here. They've already been gifted, received. They to fit your son? perfectly. Um, no, these went to a friend. Oh right, that's right. Um, these were the ones. Well, there's a picture, but it was the West Georgia spinners. Yeah. So I held together a milk bottle and fairy lights. And I loved how that came out. And they, you know, in the knitting, it's a little bit dense, but then you wash them and they just relax. Oh really? And they were. They're so squishy. Oh. Um, I'm definitely gonna have to do that again. Yeah, yeah. Um, this was really, really nice. And the finished socks are great, yeah. and they fit him perfectly. Good. And so they're already on his feet. Lovely. Um, so photo is there. So then you know it's March now, so it was time to cast on March socks. So, so I you went got some stash diving and um, cast on some March socks. I can't wait to see. How did we get there from? Sorry. Well, because that's what I was, I was flipping oh, through right. and um, I wanted to add a little something special to my March socks. So mm -hmm. I brought, pulled out one of my Stitch Dictionaries. But yeah, I was flipping through Sark this weekend and um, I love all the designs in that book. They all look, yeah. they look fun in it and very wearable. I think I knitted the uh, the cardigan, the sleevelesses yet, but that was from Sark, I want to say. It's oh no, that was from all over. Yeah, that was from her all other, over. another of her books. Yeah. yeah, I wonder if she's got any new That's books really in the good. in the works right now. I'm sure she does. We'll she does. To... Yes, she does. Mm -hmm. Tell me more. Um. Well, she. I. Uh, if you, I got her newsletter. The next book is all essays <gasps> on color. Oh. Oh. So. <gasps> oh. I love that. Her and Felicity Ford. Oh wow! I love Felix. All right, yeah. good. I'll yeah. be looking forward to that. We'll need to see if we can get it here too yeah. for our friends out there. Um, well, good. So, um, so you had a nice weekend, sort of going through your books and finding mm -hmm. things to knit, and then just knitting, knitting, knitting. Yeah, I had a very knitterly weekend. I baked bread though. Oh, nice. Yeah, no need. 
if you want a really simple works every time go to king arthur flowers website and just do their peasant bread i made mm -hmm. two loaves this week i made two loaves last weekend as well put one in the freezer were you a pandemic bread maker no <laughs> no this is not a sourdough super are you kidding me what were we doing in the pandemic maggie I know, I know. we were right off our feet <laughs> <laughs> because you guys had to stay home and get a hobby. I did manage a hand spun sweater. You did. I did. You did. I did not. That was my first. Yeah. 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 Are you going to do that again? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Have I, you... I, I have some, like, so some of the fiber I bought at last Rhinebeck, mm -hmm. I believe I bought more than enough to make a sweater. It's just a cool. matter of, um, I very much, I don't just spin it and then figure out the the sweater I do I do that a lot with lots of hand spun a figure you know I just spin it and then I figure out what it wants yeah. to be but um the things where I do it the opposite way where I think of okay what am I aiming to make yeah um, because it's a whole sweater's worth build it from there oh my gosh that sounds so. Maggie people would love to hear your process and yeah. learn more about that yeah I'm not ready to start that yet but I'll, I'm ha I'll happily share my thought process and some sampling I usually do sampling to make sure I think I can get and that I like the yarn tell us in the comments if that's interesting because Sorry, Maggie, yeah. but that's very interesting, <laughs> isn't it? And it also, is. tell us if we're making, or if Maggie's making spinners of you, or if you're already a spinner. I'd be really interested to know how many spinners yeah. are out there. I am not. I'm a confirmed non-spinner at this point. I'm a knitter. Yeah. I mean, I've tried to be a weaver, and I look at my beautiful floor loom every day, and I'm not, I'm not there. But yeah. maybe one day I'll get there. But I'm a knitter. I'm just a knitter. And that's what I do. I think is that for okay? me, that's like, okay. it absolutely is okay. <laughs> um, I think, too, like, it, it has to be something that fills me up. And right now, some of those things that are too, like, I'm not spinning quite as much right now just because I, I don't want to just spin and have it go in the stash right at this point there right. are, are times where I absolutely I'm like I want to spin I don't really care what I end up with yeah um and that's totally fine I end up with you know a beautiful default yarn that I yeah. will happily knit later but yeah. um there are so many things that I want to knit right now that mm -hmm. I'm just and You're it's so fast it. to just kind of pick it up and go as opposed to the thinking about yeah but I find right now I don't have the same amount of brain space it takes to <laughs> wonder to want to make yes um, like to plan is that because we're keeping you so busy at work here um maybe a little bit I mean by the time I get home at night the last thing I want to do is make more decisions I can't <laughs> a tv show which makes my eighth grader extremely happy because she's like i can't i got it <laughs> yeah so yeah i just happily you know it's easier to just flip through a pattern book and go that yeah yeah well good yeah i'm excited to when you get to that point no pressure yeah, yeah. <laughs> no pressure i'll get there <laughs> yeah so yeah so you've had a good weekend That's yeah nice. so i had a good weekend There's yeah. plenty that i have plenty of knitting to show Ooh, lovely lovely so. um yeah i had a very nice homey weekend too like i was saying i baked bread i made some food for the week because i got the kids coming today which i love mm. and um yeah i've finished a book this morning as well i've nice. been reading yeah so i finished a book yeah, life is good. Just sort of content and copacetic and nothing too crazy, which That's I really good. enjoy. Yeah. 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 All right. So should we get back to the podcast? We should get back to, to the podcast. So you did mention what you're wearing mm -hmm. and this is knitted in Rama Strick garn mm -hmm. and you've got um, clasps on it that you got from the Woolly Thistle. Um, actually, I got these from a friend. Oh, really? But we do sell very similar. We don't have these exact, okay. but we have very similar ones in the shop. Very nice, and they're pewter, and they're lovely. Yes. Norwegian. Yes, they are authentic Norwegian. Yes, yes. Um, class. Yeah, she but... looked very put together today. Thank you. Not that you don't always. <laughs> I don't mean that. Whenever you add today onto something, it's like, well, what about the rest of the time? <laughs> and what are you wearing? <laughs> Help me out. Yes, so I am wearing the Dunrobin. Uh, this was the prototype that I designed the eventual pattern on. So this is pretty much very similar to what you get in the pattern, except there's much more um, yarn or, you know, just yarn in the back, yeah. which get changed up. And I think you changed some shaping. Here. I probably changed some shaping here. I don't remember now. It's um, this length, which inspired me to do my whip or my FO and um also the color work cal is on so yeah i combined those things and shall we get into it shall we talk about yeah let's see what you're knitting all right well what i'm knitting or I've... or what you've finished i didn't bring what i'm knitting God. well then let's bring what you finished all right so i finished these and this is my color work entry <laughs> 
they make me smile and they are fraternal siblings on purpose on purpose yes i mixed it up a little bit but yes i wanted wristlets to go in my sweater those are so cute <laughs> I like that they're so bright and cheery. I know, they're so happy. There's spring and a spring mm -hmm. on your wrists. Yeah. I love it. I love it. And I basically just, I started down here with a little um, Pico cast on, which was so fun and didn't take that long to do. And then I just started picking out little um, motifs like this checkerboard is so sweet. And then they got a little bit more complicated the further up the arm you went, but they're they're actually quite different. Like this one's got a bigger one up here. I think I did that here, but it's different. It's a nice way to sample different motifs. Yes, for sure. Jameson and Smith two ply, of course. And I have full sleeves when I wear these now. Nice. And I love them. Yeah. I really like that. Yeah. Those are really cute. I can't remember what I cast on. I think it was something like. 50 stitches or I can't remember no maybe it was more like 25 picots and then I quickly increased to 50 stitches in the first round or something and then um, I would just increase as I went up now they're really um, they're not perfect by any stretch of the imagination because not all the motifs finished exactly going into the next round okay so there's a little bit of Frankenstein going on but <laughs> You know, like right here, you can sort of see that that's not a beautiful join. But, I love you know, that we point that out. I know, right? Because Here's it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter, right? This is, well, well, yes, like there's another one. There's two crosses together. That's okay. It's totally okay. Like yeah. who, who's going to ever they notice that? They still delight you. Well, now everyone. Tickle, everyone tickle, tickle. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did not write this up. That's so okay. what I need to do is maybe just write it up and, and if um if you want to knit them, uh you can knit them just knowing that they won't be perfect. But what a great way to use up, say, a Jameson Smith grab bag, a spindrift grab bag, any or old even, bits and I bet bobs. you it hardly used anything. Hardly of course I didn't measure anything, but yes, I hardly <laughs> used anything at all. I think too it like if you were sampling for a sweater or a yoke and what colors you wanted, mm. that would be a fun way to do the, it. A Paul Klee sort of colorway. Mm -hmm. Yes. Aren't they cute though? They're just they so are. springy. They are. They're and really happy. happy. Yeah. My happy wristlets. I love it. Yeah. So yes, I'm gonna I can't awesome. you want to show us the bag that you had it in? Yes. Ta -ta. I love it. I have been so I was I was told to take this to New York City with me mm -hmm. with the kids and yeah. I did because I grabbed a few photos of it such as they were and um I found that I really enjoyed this mm -hmm. the the weight of it the size of it just feels really really lovely and we don't have too many of these left I think we've right. got some of this and some of the black and purple the the woolly thistle colorway this one there you go right there I grabbed it so that's what we've got left and these are beautiful and just really nice in the hand and they carry a lot they do yeah i, threw, I just brought my I threw three skeins of rambler in this one and like it's, yeah and there's, there's still, still loads of room yeah i've just got my fo's in here i have more fo's but do you want to share us a whip because i sure i left my whip at home i can't believe that sure so i've got a couple of whips so i've started my march socks Ooh. as i said so i'm knitting this month with um some Garth and Snowdonia. This one's in the Glindweir. Oh, I'm probably saying that pretty. Wrong. And um, it's a marl. Colorway. It's a very dark marl. I had started knitting with this yarn a couple years ago. Mm. And the pattern I chose, you just couldn't see it because it's such a dark yarn. So I, I ripped that out. Um, I really like how it's knitting up. It's, oh my. So, <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. Tell I, us more. I really like it. So this is what I went, uh, yeah. I went diving in my, uh, I pulled out a stitch dictionary. Show everybody. Come I, on. Let's go. <laughs> I wanted to, um, just add a little bit of interest at the top of the sock. Oh, so you're just doing that? So I'm then... just doing that and then it'll just be plain from I have there to down. do something like that. Because I figure if this socks. is what you're going to see sticking out of. <laughs> yeah, the, your boots the, or whatever. The, so the rest I just didn't yeah. have the didn't have what it takes to go all over i've why. never knitted um, color work socks because i'm afraid that i'm not going to get them over my heel i have a very very broad high arch and all that crazy stuff yeah can never get in a pair of boots 
but um so I've always sort of stayed away but I like this idea just doing it around the top yeah and so cup. I used um some rambler leftover from my January socks um for the cream oh the natural yeah. yes and Good. um and yeah, so that was really potato chippy to mm. just kind of watch that happen. Um, I think I'll be able to get it on my leg, no problem. I will yeah. try it on shortly just uh -huh. to make sure. Um, and Gorgeous. Yeah, pretty happy with and it. And 100% wool socks coming from Garth and Art. And a little bit of... And a little bit of still 100% wool Rambler. Yeah. So I have been wearing my Rambler socks. I absolutely love them. Okay. They're super cozy. They're wearing really well. I've had no pilling, no wearing. I've worn them in boots. Oh, um, brilliant. And I'm Good. really, really happy with them. They're so comfortable. That's my whip that I left at home today yeah. is I'm knitting on a pair of socks. I'm knitting on Virginia's latest or one of her designs, um, if you go out, that you had knitted, mm -hmm. inspired me to start. Yeah. And I, um, I've i turned the heel. We're, we're decreasing down oh, nice. the foot now, but yeah. I don't have them here. Yeah. That's gorgeous. Yes. I love that. So I love that geometric design yeah. and high contrast. I just wanted something kind of bold yeah. that you would really like see and stand out. And Oh, Maggie, let's see what you have your bag. You have your oh, bag yeah. with you. So I have my, I brought my big um, seaweed tote. It's looking good. I really like it. It's I, lovely. It, it gets used all the time. Yeah. It always has knitting in it. Yeah. Um, you so got a lot of knitting going on. I do on, have maybe. a lot of knitting in there. So some of that's just, I don't know if I'm, I'm probably not the only one that does this, where I'm like, oh, I'm going to have to knit that. And I go grab the yarn and I stick it in my bag. That's a great way to do it. Yeah. yeah. Although what happens is I end up with a bag, bag, full, a of bag full of bag, full of bag of like, <laughs> oh, I was going to knit that with that. And then It's sort of your real life cue that you're ignoring if you're not getting yeah. to it. Sometimes yeah. I get to it. Yeah. And sometimes I don't. So do we have uh, this Garth and Or in the shop? We do have Garth and Or Snowdonia in the shop. Um, we brought it back in like last month, I think, and it has sold really well. So um, if there's a colorway that you want but is currently out of stock, you can sign up for the back in stock. We are restocking it. I think the order is in the works mm -hmm. right now. Yeah, so yeah. it should be in soon. Good. But, yeah, I really Good. love this colorway. Yeah, I love what you're doing. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Um, and then I have, I have another whip. Okay, show us your whips. Um, and then this, we can get on this to... This is the last one. There is, oh. there, there are more at home. Oh. But I started, <gasps> I started a little sheep. Oh, my gosh. Um, so we had our Zoom cast on party for the um, <laughs> color work cow. I haven't stuffed her head yet, as you can tell. And I couldn't be bothered to do the embroidery on her nose just yet. Look it. Um, and yeah. somebody brought in, I'm so sorry, I don't remember your name, but, but somebody during the cast on party showed us their donkey. Yeah. Um, and I need to knit the donkey so bad now, but I've been wanting to knit her for a while. Um, and she is so, so cute. So I've cast her on. And what are you knitting her with? I'm knitting her with a ball of JNS, I think in color 1A. Yeah. And, and I'm holding her... I decided to add some mohair. Oh, so fluffy. So that she's just a little bit... She's got a little bit of halo, and she's just a little... She's I so love so her cute. garter ridge... Yeah. It is perfect. Yeah, she's it's so cute. Oh. So this pattern is from Motion Friends. This we cannot keep in stock, it seems. Yeah. There's a so lot of there she is. Stuffy you knitters. Can see, that's what she's gonna look oh, like. Oh yeah. And then I've also put the yarn in there for the donkey because he's he's, he's coming be next. next. Yeah. Oh. So but it was so cute. I was doing her arms yesterday and you end up with the What size needles are you knitting on? Um I think these are double zeros. They seem like they're the same size as my Latvian mittens. Okay. Um so, so quite small. Yeah, so yeah. Um, in any given night, I'll either work on her or the Latvian mittens, but yeah. my hands can only take so much, yeah. so then I switch to something yeah. big and juicy after that. Yeah. So, but so Beautiful. Fun. Oh, so, so fun. fun. I can't wait till she's done. Yeah. And that's from Mission Friends, and which that's is from by Mission Lina. Friends, which we do, I think, currently have in stock. Where's, right where's Mrs. Duck? Here she is. There's Nana Duck. Nana Duck. So. Lovely. Yes. Lovely. That's one of those, though, that I said I was going to knit through the whole book. Well, you will take your time, time. take your coming. time. Um, I don't have any uh, whips with me, like I said, but I do have, do we have the sock blockers? Yes. I do have an FO for my February socks. Nice. And I am no more clued in as to what the heck these ones are actually called. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't remember what the heck, I what pattern I was. I know it's from... At least I'm assuming it's from this handmade life, Olivia. Um, but I can't find the pattern. So yes, it's got it's knitted uh, toe up, which is not my favorite, but I loved the little design on it. Here you can see okay. the design this way. 
and Has so short row heel short row heel yeah just little kind of shorties uh knitted in rambler no nope. no knitted in john urban exmoor sock yes the ones i'm knitting right now are in rambler though yeah yeah so are you yes. knitting with a color of rambler yeah or? uh the uh wild clover nice. pink come yeah. on yeah. and then the other thing i wanted to show you and i don't have it here i also <clears throat> was going through all my knitting stuff i was calling the knits a little bit actually and i came I'm across just casting everything on yeah well i came across oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's not I, happening. I, I, inspiration struck that i should go through and you know yeah. see what i have and i did um find quite a lot more than i expected but um i found a pair of socks waiting for you to finish your sweater i know i really want you to. i know i know i gotta do that that's so well I, and i've got a and i've got a <clears throat> oh, hansel hat full yeah. on hansel hat which you're on those last long rows though i maybe got to do that now and try and have it finished in time for casting on because we're going to do a shawl cowl again that's mm -hmm. coming so maybe i should finish that up before then i'll maybe consider that where were we i was you, you were them. looking through your whips yep oh and i found a whole sock knitted in west yorkshire spinners all i had to do was cast off the chill which i did and it's the um everyday hermione okay which i love that pattern i've got several pairs i've never knit oh my god i think i've got it's been in my queue for like a decade i might have three <laughs> or four i know and it's a free pattern everybody's knit it apart from you maggie yeah. it's a great knit and um it's in the Dusty Miller gray color. Okay. And so I've got a half. I've got a half FO. So I'm going to finish that one. I'm still knitting on my wild clover socks. I'm more than halfway through the first sock of that. So I feel like my sock knitting is doing just fine. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Um, yes. And now I'm knitting a sweater that I'm trying to sort of bring into, into fruition. So yeah, I'm feeling very fulfilled creatively right now which nice. is nice yeah that's yeah. wonderful mm -hmm. that's no small thing no i know because sometimes you feel like where is it gone you know kind of lost your mojo a little bit or my thumbs were really hurting for a long time and i couldn't knit for long that seems to have died down oh good yeah i've learned from my mother that the arthritis comes and goes huh. um can be really painful and then you're completely it's like you've never had it and i'm going through a nice phase of not having it so i'm knitting and it feels good, good. yeah Excellent. Yeah. All right. So, do you why have anything else to I show? I do. Us? But why don't we go to Caitlin? Um, yes. And uh, hear what <laughs> Caitlin has to show us. All right. We'll see you on the other side. Hi, everyone. It's Caitlin. I'm happy to be on the Shopcast again this month, as I am about once a month. I'm part of the Woolly Thistle team. I work remotely from Indianapolis, Indiana. And I come on to share some of the knitting and other making I've been doing and uh, other thoughts about yarn world stuff. Today I've got a couple of finished things to show you, plus something that's on my needles right now. And uh, just a little bit of thought and discussion about um, making different decisions as far as yarns and gauge, um, kind of veering from the pattern based on what yarn you're looking to use or have available. Uh, so the first thing to show you is what I have on. This is my most recent finished thing. It is the Maya cardigan from the contrast book from Lina, and that's uh, filled with designs from designer Mayu KP. Um, I've shown this on the Shopcast as a work in progress, but now it's done. So wanted to share just a couple little things about it. Um, it's a worked flat cardigan and there's no seaming. There's just picking up of the button band at the end. Um, I love the construction of it and how it finished up. I used Alifoss Lopi. It's a bulky weight Lopi yarn from Iceland. Uh, we carry at the Woolly Thistle. This is the kind of beigey, um, neutral color. It's got that lopy halo it gets from having the two kinds of fibers incorporated into the yarn. And I got buttons from my local shop. Um, I've been wearing it around as sort of like a spring jacket almost, uh, late winter warm piece. It's quite dense and warm. Um, fits really well turned out um, just the way I was hoping 
And what I really wanted to show you that I love about it is this sleeve. Uh, part of why it fits so nicely and like stays on well is this cool sleeve construction. I believe this is called a contiguous sleeve. Uh, it has sort of a saddle shoulder and sort of a set-in sleeve, but almost like a raglan feel. It's pretty crazy um, how, how this all works out. And it's all done um, with increases at um, just the right spots. So you cast on for the entire neckline and have like maybe one stitch that starts your front and then um, you increase stitches kind of every other row here and increase over here. And then you stop increasing on those sections and you start increasing from this side and from this side to make this really nice shoulder. Um, so I, that's, I think the first design I've done that's a contiguous sleeve and um, just really love how that worked out. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about with this sweater is that I chose a very different yarn than what was suggested and wanted to share just a couple tips for how I went about deciding that. Uh, the original pattern calls for a worsted weight yarn held together with a Surrey alpaca. And I was thinking about worsted weight yarns from the Woolly Thistle to pair with maybe a silk mohair that we carry. Um, but the Surrey alpaca actually was like a heavier weight than just a normal lace weight silk mohair would be. And then I got to thinking about holding two strands of the mohair and that just sounded cumbersome and um, yeah, not quite what I wanted. So what I did is I looked at the gauge that this pattern was going to have. Um, it's 14 stitches for four inches. And uh, then I looked at Woolly Thistle Yarns that had a suggested yarn gauge of something similar to that. Um, usually the label on a yarn will list what the yarn producer recommends as a gauge that's going to give you a nice fabric. A lot of times it'll give you a range because um, one of the really awesome things about woolly wool especially is that it knits up nicely at different gauges. I have a little bit more um, example to show you on that in a minute. Um, it, it can be pushed more on the dense side or on the looser side and it can still hold up really nicely and create a great fabric because woolly wool especially still has a lot of um, like spring and life and fluffiness um, that kind of adjusts well to fill in the gaps, uh, no matter your gauge. Uh, so I looked at yarns at the Woolly Thistle that were about 14 stitches uh, over four inches, and Alifos Lopi is 13. It is actually the only technical bulky weight yarn that we carry right now. Um, I think maybe Rama Vams is also pretty fluffy, but I think even that, it was gonna be pushing it up a little bit too much. Um, so yeah, this um, Lopi was, was what I wanted. Um, it's 13 stitches over four inches on a US nine or 10 and a half size needle because everyone's gauge varies a little bit. We're all different. Um, so I thought that this would probably create uh, on a size eight recommended needle from the pattern. I figured it'd probably create a little bit denser fabric than what was intended in the pattern. But then I was thinking about the style of jacket that I wanted, how I was okay with it being dense because I want to wear it as sort of an outer piece. And I was okay with it being a little less like drapey and a little bit more structured, um, especially given the fit of um, just the, the style of it. I didn't need it to have a bunch of ease and flow uh, and drape. So uh, I think it worked out great and I'm really happy with this. Um, sweater. That was already a lot to say about just this first project, um, but wanted to show um, just another example of how woolly wool is awesome and um, can create such different fabrics depending on the drape. Um, so I have just some Jameson and Smith two ply jumper weight, one of our faves, and this is the Flowers of Fort Rose hat by Kareen. Uh, I used um, yeah, Jameson and Smith two ply jumper weight. The pattern suggests a size three needle for the main part of the hat. I forget the gauge, but it's um, you know on a on a three, it creates a pretty dense fabric, and also um, like doubly thick because it's got the color work uh, strands in the back. 
and that that feels really nice um, for a hat that's okay to have a bit of structure and kind of want that doubly warm dense layer windproof you know uh, works out great then I also use Jameson and Smith both jumper weight and Shetland Supreme uh, for my Hansel hat and this needle size is an eight so compared to the three for the Fort Rose hat this was knit on an eight this cream is the supreme and then jumper weight are the colors in the waves here. But for this, uh, it's really nice to have something drapey and sort of open and fluffy. This is in mostly garter stitch here. And um, yeah, on a size eight, this, you know, has a very different feel. Uh, you might not want this quite loose of a gauge in a garment. Um, you know, I don't have light behind me, but you can tell it would be a little bit, um, Sort of see-through but uh yeah just wanted to to um mention that uh woolly wool gauge can always be sort of taken with a grain of salt um and usually includes sort of a range of stitch counts um that um it will you know still create a really nice fabric um another project that i finished recently which i also um substituted yarn plans for is this hat, I need to pull up the page, the Mene hat. This is from Sorry Nordland's Softly Timeless Knits book. We have this in the shop now. And uh, the original calls for a strand of, I think, fingering weight plus, now maybe DK weight, plus three strands of different silk mohairs. She designed it to use up your scraps. Um, I did not have that many kind of small balls of silk mohair laying around. Um, but I did have this mystery yarn. It's two different colors of what I think is maybe fingering weight. It was unlabeled when I got it from a friend who was de-stashing. And um, I just thought, you know what, I'm gonna try holding those together and see what it makes. And my husband wanted a new hat. So um, I think my gauge is a little tighter than what the original calls for. But I knew that a ribbed hat was going to be really stretchy. Actually, the great thing about this is that not only does it fit my husband on the tighter side, which is sort of how he likes a, a hat to be fitted, it also fits my two-year-old <laughs> if you, you know, just barely um, kind of stretch it and then maybe fold the brim up a bit more. I knitted a lot shorter brim than the pattern calls for. Um, she calls for a like a triply folded brim and... Um, this was the request for this particular hat, just kind of a, a once folded brim. So um, yeah, especially with a little hat project where you're using up stash, um, I say just go for it. Hold whatever you want together to tr try to create whatever gauge and see if you get close. And if not, then it'll either fit a smaller person or it will stretch. <laughs> um, so yeah, just go for it. And um, yeah, be brave about trying different gauges and um, yeah, see what you come up with. Last thing I wanted to show you is the work in progress. I have been knitting along with the color work accessories knit along still going on. And uh, for my, I, I lined up two projects and I've started the first. I may get to the second, but this is uh, sort of a sample slash test knit of Corrine's new hat design. Uh, you'll have seen her show her versions. She's got two so far uh, on the previous shop cast. I'm knitting one up in um, Jameson's of Shetland Spindrift. And I think the gauge is about 28 stitches for four inches. I'm knitting on a size three. Uh, I'm working on um, like size, I think 16 inch needles, which I think is giving me just enough um, like bunch that I'm not really tugging my stitches around the, the ring, but I'm also having enough spare room that I can kind of stretch my stitches out as I'm trying to make my floats nice and even. So you can see those under there. It's really pretty, really fun, uh, cool pattern to see coming out. And um, this is yet unnamed as I'm recording um, and not quite a pattern that's out in the world yet, but in the works. So stay tuned there. All right, I think that covers everything for today, my updates here. Hope you enjoy the rest of the Shopcast, and we'll see you next time. Bye.
Well, thank you, Caitlin. I love your FO cardigan. That sort of fuzzy wuzziness mm -hmm. on it is really, really lovely. And your whole discussion about uh, swapping out yarns and gauge was helpful too. And you're knitting a spindrift version of my new hat. And if you have written in uh, in the comments below the last episode um, names for the hat, thank you so much. Uh, we are taking note of them. This is in sort of uh, tweaking phase and pattern writing phase. Um, it's an interesting hat. I like it. And there's a lot of fabric up at the top, which gets all bunched up. But the way the pattern reduces is lovely. Mm -hmm. um, I really like it. So, yeah, this is uh, Jameson and Smith version. Shall I put it on? I gotta sure. take my glasses off because my glasses are too big for my. There we go. I'm gonna do it this way. There. Yeah. Very cute. It's very comfortable. Mm -hmm. Fits really well. Nice and warm. So, yeah, that's coming. I don't know when. We're working on it, but mm -hmm. yes, yeah, so Caitlin knitted a spindrift version, which is lovely. I just want to do some housekeeping because I forgot in the beginning uh, to mention that we still are looking for those of you who want to send in video talking about your whips or, you know, designing you're doing or whatever you're doing in the, the woolly wool world. We would love to have your video and put it on here as a segment. Uh, so yeah, get in touch if that's you. I think there is a form on the website. If you go yeah. to the Woolly Thistle, look in the menu for connect and then look in there, you'll find a, a Shopcast contributor form, something like that, where you can mm -hmm. tell us what you want to do and then we'll let you know how to do it. So definitely get in touch. We would love to share what you're doing. Um, a free shipping on all orders over 125 and be sure to check the show notes down below for anything we talk about it should all be there also there's a link to the shop with the show notes there and there's beautiful photos of everything we talk about where you can click on it it'll take you to that so if you're looking for something that we mention go to the shop uh show notes and click on the picture and that's probably your quickest easiest way to figure out what the heck we're talking about if we forget to say its name or something and also we have pips um you should, if you haven't already, get an account with the Woolly Thistle. Very easy to do. It's free to do. And then you start earning pips automatically when you shop with us. And then you can redeem those pips. For you have to, you have to once you're logged in, go to the, there's a purple button um, on the screen. It's called Thistler Club. Mm -hmm. And you click on that. And once you've clicked on that, then you are signed you up. Are. And every time you shop while you're logged in, you'll earn pips. Yes. So make sure to do that because it's, it's free money and it's money off your next order, which it's is great. It's like free yarn. It's like free yarn. Who doesn't like free yarn? Nobody. Everybody loves free yarn. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. So do you want to announce our winner? Because we oh, haven't yes. done that yet and we're already I'm so far into the show. Um, so our first winner of a $25 gift card to the Woolly Thistle is at AnneMurray9665. And Anne says, what a great episode. I especially love the inspiration for using up leftover bits of yarn. Hey, hey, Anne Murray. That's a very famous name. <laughs> it is. <laughs> um, so Anne, if you can email us at info at the Woolly Thistle, put prize winner in all caps, and we will get you your $25 gift card. Yes, and thank you for being here and for leaving a comment. If you would like to be in the running for a free gift card to the Woolly Thistle, $25. All you need to do is leave a comment down below, click on the subscribe button, give us a thumbs up too. That really helps the channel uh, reach new viewers and you will be picked at random uh, as a winner next time for the next show and we might announce you live like this. Yes. Okay, Maggie. So what else do you have to show? You've got a lovely I have, FO I, there. So a couple of weeks ago, I'd shown a finished hand spun. I think it was maybe back in January, actually. Um, and I decided not to put that hand spun in stash, but instead to cast on. So I finished, um, at, for anybody who remembers, it was a hand spun that was made from bits and bobs of Into the World. It was all kinds of yeah. mixed, and it just looked like sort of a crazy skein. <laughs> um, and so I've knit the Brock beanie by lovely. Isolde T. Oh, lovely. Um, and you can see that um, the way that it stripes. So the hand spun, because you're doing like little bits of like this color and then this color, it was like all these little like bits and balls. So, so it does. It makes like neat little stripes. Wait, is this one skein or is this a mishmash of skeins? So it's one skein of hand spun that was very mishmashy in the spinning. So where you've got stripes of black, that's just the way. So the black, I went with some deep stash or oh, okay. worsted weight yarn. So the, the pattern calls for, you can use all kinds of bits and bobs. I just stuck with these two yarns. Gotcha. 
one solid black and then the hand spun. And is it mosaic um, knitting or what? It's not. It's just stranded knitting. Oh, it is? It was a really simple motif and it's like a three row repeat. Uh -huh. And so I alternated on one section, the black is the main color. And then in the next section, the hand spun's the main color. And I just wow. kept alternating all the way up. Wow. Um, it's and... phenomenal what you can do. I love it. It's really cute. Yeah. I love these greens and blues. Um, and the nice thing about this pattern is she gives you um, the stitch counts for very weights of yarn oh. so if you want to use fingering weight scraps you can knit yeah knit that size um i have like a half a ball of junction fiber mill left over so this is another great yes pattern for that, for that. yeah so i'm probably just going to make a bunch of these and what's that called again brock beanie okay so yeah, yeah. lovely 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 i've already cast on the second you have one. been knitting like i have crazy. i've been knitting like crazy so when my hands get tired from the small yeah. needles then i pull these size sevens out oh nice lovely. that feels good so for yeah. sure for sure so um okay is that all our knitting that's all I the knitting that i that brought is all the knitting so as we're all knitting together on our color work what are you knitting for the color work cow i'm working on my lavender mittens Oh, that's right. Did you not bring them? I did not bring okay. them. Okay. All right. Glad I may to have that gotten sorted. distracted right. by a sock and a sheep and other yes. things. So. Yes. Well, the cow is underway now. We had a lovely Zoom call. Mm -hmm. Listen, I am so sorry if you weren't able to make it in. We didn't realize um, that so many people would show up and we thought we had enough spaces. So I think we are going to do one at the end um, so that if you weren't able to make it, or even if you were, that you can come join us. We'll make sure yeah. this availability for every, everyone to attend that uh, wanted to. We've never had it go over the threshold of 100. No. And I remember seeing 100 people. I'm like, oh, that's nice and round and even. Yeah. <laughs> not, not even thinking that right. there might be more people. So sorry about that. That's just teething problems. We're still learning when we do stuff. So yeah. um, sorry about that. But really, that. like we've had other Zoom calls and have not been near that limit. So exactly. it's a bit of a a, it's a delightful surprise that so many of you wanted to join us. So yeah, we'll make sure. sure next time that everybody yes. can Yes, in. we will. And then, and then you got to show up. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll probably do, I think we're talking about doing a little end of cow um, when, when we get there. But we are in the middle of our color work cow, which is going really well. I'm really enjoying watching and seeing what everybody's knitting. It's an accessory cow, so small things. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're doing a $75 gift card prize for the first winner to the Woolly Thistle, which is really good. You can pick out anything you want. Uh, second prize is a Jameson of Shetland Spindrift grab bag. Woohoo! And the third prize is a TWT Notions pack that includes the Woolly Thistle Small Tote, a Tuft Hand and Body Bar, Thistle Stitch Marker Set, and a Darning Needle Set, which is just lovely. You know, you can't have too many of those things. Mm -hmm. And we've teamed up with some designers as well who are giving away prizes. Um, let's see, they have offered, let's see, Kristen Drysdale, who's at Scandi Work, you know Kristen. Uh, she's a huge into color work. Nordic Knitting Primer Book and five winners of a self-published pattern download. Thank you, Kristen. Tracy Miller, who's Tracy Knits of the Grocery Girls. She's uh, giving five winners, uh, five self-published pattern downloads each, which is lovely. Ella Gordon, uh, who works at Jameson and Smith. She is a designer too. She's giving five winners of a self-published pattern download. Elizabeth Doherty, hi Elizabeth, Blue Bee Studios. She's giving three winners of a self-published pattern download. Mary O'Shea, who is Tully Mongan, and we do have a couple of her designs in the shop. Uh, she's doing one Indigo Shadows, one North Country Cowl, and one Sled Run Cowl, and one Sunday Supper Cowl pattern downloads, all of those. Um, Gudrun Johnson, hi Gudrun. She is giving um, one Shetland Solstice pattern. Is that the hat? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the hat that she recently, um, yep. Yep. And one Melba hat pattern and one Huxley hat pattern download. And Anya Zimmer, uh, one Grand Forest hat pattern, one Northwoods hat pattern download. So thank you designers so much for uh, sharing in the fun and the joy of knitting together with your prizes. And um, we hope that you're enjoying your knitting and that it's all going well. If it's not, share that with us too. <laughs> in the Facebook group. We just went over 20,000 people in our Facebook group. Yeah. Never imagined. Yeah, that's huge. So thank you for that. We hope you're enjoying it in there. And uh, yes, uh, I think the Color Work Cal will continue on until middle of March, mm -hmm. which when this goes out will be maybe another week or so for it to finish yeah. up. March 17th is when it ends. I just, I just keep knitting. 
until I'm told to stop. <laughs> <laughs> and then what's the next thing? Shawl Cal signups and kit offerings start March 15th. So we're catching you on your way out with the Shawl Cal, um, which is any shawl you want, really. Mm -hmm. We should talk about what's on the bouncers too. Yes. Just thought of that. And the Cal starts March 29th. So you got some time to get your ducks in a row. But I hope that you knit with us again. We love it. Um, this is a bit earlier than last year. And we're going to try and fit in another Cal after. Shall we say what that is? I'm so excited about this I'm one. I'm really excited for it too. It's going to be a vest cow. Color work or not, it's a vest, it's a garment, it's without sleeves. Oh. So start thinking about that. That's coming after the shawl cow. We're very excited about that. And mm -hmm. of course, you know, we'll have more cows after that, but that's good for now. Um, <laughs> yeah. Keep us busy. Yeah, that should keep us busy. We've never done a vest cow before, so this is new and exciting and fun. Yeah. And it's a garment without sleeves, which just feels very doable. Or all over color work feels more doable. Um, yeah, I'm excited for this. Mm -hmm. There's going to be, gonna be there's so many great vest patterns. And yeah. like we said, it's going to be vest, uh, color work vest and non color work vest. Yeah, yeah. So you could knit just a very plain one just to learn how to do a garment, or you could do one with lots of texture or lace work. Or um, we've got time to think about that. Because yes. first, there's the shawl cow. <laughs> yes, there's the shawl cow, which will include haps and non haps. So yeah. any shawl you want. Um, will be in there. Yeah, so speaking of the our little bouncers here, um, so we do have um, the Hansel Hap yep. um, knit with Jameson and Smith on um, this bouncer. Yep. And over on that bouncer are some lovely surprises that were sent to us. Yes, um, yes. By the delightful Carolyn Holbrook. Um, she has designed the um, Highland Thistle Shawl, which, which, there which you go. feels is, so, is so soft here. and lovely. Um, we have kits for this in the shop, and yeah. Carolyn, um, Probably sent us this sample a few years ago. A couple of years um, ago, not that, no, no and, not years and years ago. <laughs> no, no. Um, but it's this is knit with Tuku fingering, um, as is the Highland Thistle uh, sweater. This is beautiful. She sent this to us um, as a sample for the shop, which, thank you, Carolyn. Yeah. And it's got the thistle motif on it, which is the same as what's on yeah. the shawl. And it's knitted it's in Tuku wool. It is light and airy and mm -hmm. just soft and fuzzy wuzzy yeah she also just designed this new little shawlette which i think would be great for beginners yeah um she designed it in um mountain meadow how do you mm -hmm. say that is it mountain, mountain meadow? meadow yeah which is a very interesting mill uh here in america um but uh she, this sample that she knitted for us is in tuku wool and is gorgeous it blocked out really nice and airy yes. and i love these little they're, I bet you they're sort of Pico-esque um, in how they're made. Um, and I think, now, I don't know, does this qualify as a shawl for a shawl cap? So this one, I mean, it would be rather small. We haven't decided on the official rules yet, but this one is called the All About the Fringe Bandana. Right. Um, so it's again. a very small shawl. Yeah. Um, but it, it would give you all the um, all the things you need to know in how to knit a shawl. So it, it is some foundational information. Yeah. Let's see. It's very cozy. It's, Easy to wear. Yeah, it feels really nice on. Yeah. Yeah. Very easy to wear. Mm -hmm. Love it. So thank you, Carolyn, for sending these shop samples to us. We appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, and Tuku will. It does. It's yeah, squishy it's and nice. Really I need lovely. to knit more with that. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Me too, Me too. <laughs> Stay with us. We have Rachel from Farrell. Um, she was off traveling, so she takes us with her. So that will be good. We'll show you that. We'll end out with that. But before that, we do have to announce another winner. And before that, we have to talk about a few more things that are in the shop. Yeah. Some new things. So Maggie, what do we have? For new, we have squirrel scissors. <laughs> we squirrel, squirrel scissors. scissors. Um, we couldn't resist these. They're so adorable. And just really pretty. Um, and you can't have too many little scissors in your knitting bag. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you can see that they, they do really They're little, little squirrels, squirrels and they come in different finishes. Yeah. They're a little larger than tiny little pincers, but actually these are a good size. Right. Like and if they've you got were, nice weight in them. If you were going to be doing your sticking. Yeah. And you want a nice sharp scissors sharp. that weren't, weren't too big or too small. Yeah. These are perfect. Yes. Um, these are in the shop. And they're now. adorable. They're adorable. Yeah, very cute. So we got those. And Yarnadelic is back in. Yarnadelic is back in. Yarnadelic and Exmoor were recently topped up. This yarn, 
so beautiful. It is so beautiful. I couldn't fit it all in the basket. It's mm. so pretty. Lots of good colors. Should we go through the colors? I oh, know folks yes, like they have the they best names. Yes, they do. So this is English Sparrow, which is a very green green with yellow and blue. Mm -hmm. That's what they are good at. They do these melange uh, effects, which is basically taking a whole bunch of different colors and tops yeah. and mixing it together. Yeah, really good. This one is of my hands. It's a lovely. Blue. And this is all sport white. I wanted to point out too, they've redone their labels. Oh, of course, yes. They're really pretty labels. Yes, that's their logo on there. Mm -hmm. uh, this here is Galetta gu Guitar, because Yarnadelic is all about um, groovy. Is this the one for the it's, records? Yeah, it's yeah. the name from the albums. Yeah. Um, Nobody Knows, <laughs> which that one's hard to, hard to describe the colors in that one. It's really beautiful. Harmonium is this lovely sort of winter green and it too has more yellow and blue but it's just darker to start with it's really nice yeah sunflowers in my garden oh love that lovely gold the beautiful ones this is a beautiful one um it kind of reads as gray but it's got pink and purple and red and yellow mm -hmm. and all different colors yeah gorgeous this one is Canto de Osana. So lovely, burgundy. Uh, Ordinary Joe, which is their, um, it looks like undyed. Mm -hmm. And this, of course, is 100% Falkland Corydale yarn. So very soft. I love this color. Wondrous Place. Mm. Gorgeous. These orangey apricots are really making me happy lately. Is that right? This is Women in Blue, which is a lovely light blue this yarn has a really nice sheen to it as well as a soft hand it is um it's woolly but it is soft yeah it's made with corydale yeah oh, it's on the merino just... end of soft i would say yeah indigo dust which is a really deep teal i and like this actually with together that color. yeah oh, it's so pretty it's pink moon and it's actually a coppery color i would say more than pink but pink hues yeah, but if I put that right there, yeah, it's not like a pinky pink. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Yes, I mean, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of possibilities in these skins mm -hmm. together. Uh, so we love John Arbin, and this was spun up for us. This is our order, and they spun it up and got it over to us. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. I'm just taking over. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. All right. So we got yarn and delicate in the shop. Maggie, we also have lots of cones for Jameson and Smith, mm -hmm. which are a great option if you're going to be knitting a sweater. Maybe you're going to do color work, but you're knitting a, you know, one color mm -hmm. sweater below that. Uh, that's that's a great value. And also you don't have to weave in lots of ends for the cone because you're just knitting, knitting, knitting. Yeah. Um, knitting off a cone, it does still have the mill grease in it, which is fine. It just makes it feel a little less round. It hasn't been blocked or, or wetted at all. <clears throat> so the joy of that comes when you block your finished piece or yeah. you could knit a swatch and block it and see all the grease just lifts right off. It looks kind of cloudy. Yeah. Um, and then uh, the yarn blooms and does that wonderful yeah. thing. That it, it may does. feel a bit thinner in the knitting than, yeah. than a ball of two ply, but it yeah. is the same yarn. It'll knit at the same gauge. Yeah. So whatever you're using for your whatever needle you're getting gauge on, use that same needle. Yeah. With the cone. Yes. Uh, also, I think. <clears throat> excuse me weavers really like the cones so if yeah. you're a weaver um we do have jameson smith cones ready yeah. to go yeah um i used a cone of color 54 for my paul clay sweaters for yes. mine and my daughters yes um and i still have leftover. Oh, yeah. Um, oh yeah a little bit left over on that cone i do too um, um i've knit quite a few things with my cone of 202 and there's still some there and i've i knitted my star cardi with a cone of 27 and balls of the black and so i was using both at the same time and absolutely perfect and fine yeah um and i still have tons of 27 left and i know i knitted that with the 27 this is 27 here this uh this yeah this gray here yeah, i did pull some cones up on top there oh yeah there they are oh uh, yes next to our rambler next which is rambler. lovely thank you so much if you're knitting with our rambler yeah, so. maggie were you saying during the, the shop cast or before the shop cast that you knitted a pair of socks and you're loving them in rambler during it was during during okay. so they, they heard it they, they heard, heard it. it okay good. Um, so yeah i couldn't help but pull my favorite color mm -hmm. which is 81 i still have a cone of this um and i i don't 
other than that i just really love it it's so mm -hmm. pretty i just mm -hmm. love looking at it mm -hmm. <laughs> there are some colors that are like that i don't know why this color does that for me it's a nice um, it's a soft black it's yeah. lovely but i think during our best cal i think maybe this will be my Ooh, main color good idea because you got it i got it you got to keep knitting um, from it and like, i really do want to knit with it like i don't want it to just like i it is bringing me lots of joy just yes. looking at it yes. but um it would then I, if I knit with it, I get to look at it while I'm wearing it. I know, so. I know. And then this is 01, which, you know, is a very uh, base color as well. We have a lot of base colors, but we do have some um, contrasty colors as well, if you yeah. wanted to knit something. Um, I will say, though, even though it has the mill grease, like, this still feels really, oh, yeah. really. It doesn't feel flat. Right. I think it's probably, I know my gray cone felt pretty flat in the cone, but no, this this actually looks... Fairly, yeah, like uh, this one, it feels really plump. nice and woolly, and yeah, so and there's uh, how many yards are on here? Oh, it's like 20 balls worth, I think it's about 1200. Yeah, and it's 50 a 500 yards. gram cone, yeah, so it's, it's like 20 lot. balls that's a lot, but it's a lot cheaper than buying 20 balls worth, so mm -hmm. you want to think about that too, yes, and lots of knitting time with this because it's a two ply jumper weight. This is not your big iron weight that's going to fly off the needles. You're actually going to spend a lot of time knitting with this. Right. But that's what we love because all knitting is good knitting. Yes. Mm -hmm. Lina issue 20 um, is set to release for March 15th and our copies have already arrived. Which is so nice. Um, so if you pre-order from us, we will make sure that you get it right away. Right away. As soon as no it delay. launches on March 15th. Yep. No delay. Um, and there are some really pretty patterns in here. Mm. Um, I like this. Mm -hmm. It looks very nice and springy. Fluffy. Yes. Um, some recipes. Yay. Um, Obviously, like some bread and jam this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, they're just really lovely. Um, there's also an article I was flipping through. Um, one of the perks when it lands early. Um, what we knit with now. Mm. Um, it's just a really interesting article. Mm. To, they surveyed some of their readers. Mm -hmm. And the results are there. Oh, I can't wait to read that. Mm -hmm. um, a nice um, interview. So you yeah. can pre-order this now and we will get it to you in time for the launch. Yes, yes. It, that's nice. Um, it doesn't always happen that way. Sometimes mm -hmm. our uh, copies are in transit during the launch yeah. time or they're delayed. We uh, do our best. I also pulled, we have a few copies left of issue 19. Yep. And I love this vest. Yeah, there's um, a vest right so there. So I figured since we were talking about vests. Yeah. So for you yeah. Too, so. And you could get both together if you wanted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. Lovely. And then I saw some beautiful ribbon. Yes, so we've um, topped up our Norwegian ribbon, ribbon. Um, so they'll come to you in beautiful little two-yard um, Which is enough bundles. to speak. And um, we got some new colorways in, yes. new ribbon designs. Beautiful. So I love this one. Yes. Um, it's a, um, oh. I don't know if it's named, I'm assuming it's named after Kristen Wiola, I think, um, but... This one's they, well, a it's so funny you say that because I'm thinking that makes me think of a Wiola cardigan and I mm -hmm. need to knit one. You did. Yeah. Twice. Yeah. I wore mine this weekend. Yeah. I think too. Um, I need to knit another one. I'm flipping through that book. The too. same pattern? No, a different pattern. Okay. Just because. Yeah. I mean, I like the pattern. I think I need I knit, to. But I think a different do you one. want to do one together? <laughs> After the best cow. <laughs> Lots to knit, lots to knit. Lots um, to so knit. we have um, more designs in the shop and you can grab those now. They're perfect for your steaked cardigan. Yes, you get enough that you can go up one side and up the mm -hmm. other and a little bit extra actually. Yeah, it just adds a little It's beautiful a beautiful detail. Yes, did you put ribbon on your? I did not. Oh, you need to do that. I do. Well, do that and let us see. <laughs> Because you don't have enough going on. Yeah. All right. I know. I know. I actually have a couple of sweaters where there's half a, half a ribbon. You know, there's a ribbon, but not on the other side. Just sort of move on. That's funny. Which is not a good plan. Finish your knits. We yes. should pick the a winner. Go ahead, Maggie. We don't want to forget. No. So first, uh, our second winner is at Northwoods Knitting 5993. Um, and they said, thanks for a fun and interesting episode. I'm always happy to see what you're working on and what is new in the shop. Yay. Thank you so much. Yes. Um, so at Northwoods Knitting 5993, if you can email us at info at the Woolly Thistle, put prize winner in all caps, we will get you your $25 gift card. Fantastic. And if you'd like to be in the running for a free gift card to the Woolly Thistle, just leave us a comment below. Click the subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, um, and you'll be in the running, and we'll select winners for the next episode. Yeah. 
So uh, we need to go to Rachel, but before we do, we had some people ask, uh, well, you tell so me. So we recently um, in our Facebook group did a little bit of a survey mm -hmm. um, as part of our 20K um, giveaway. We did a little bit of a survey for those of you who were willing to answer. And there were a couple of questions in the survey, uh, questions about us and about the shop. Oh. Um, and so we thought that it might be fun to actually answer those. Okay. Ones. Yeah. So, um, I hope first, I can. I, ha I hope we can too. Um, <laughs> the first one I'm already a little bit stumped on, but hopefully you know right off the top of your head. Um, how many employees do we have here at the Holy Thistle now? Oh my gosh. It's a lot. I think it's like, it's 15 or 16, which might be surprising to people. Right. Most of them are part time. Yeah. So we get to count them as an employee, but they're really, you know, working 20 hours or less. But I think full time employees, there's you and me. Seth, Seth. I was gonna say, what are we at, four now? Maybe four plus, you know, we got a lot of people, well, we got some people like uh, Jill, she is almost full time. Mm -hmm. She's sort of teetering between. So yeah, 15 probably actual people, but working in varying levels of time. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot to manage. It is. <laughs> um... But I love it. And I love everybody on the team. I have to say this, that, um, here at the Bully Thistle, we all pull in the same direction. Mm -hmm. And it's a it's a beautiful thing to behold. So I love everybody that we work with. Um, just work really well together and we figure out we figure out our problems and challenges and, and you know get through and make things better. And I'm talking about, you know, um, you know, how to do things. We're always learning how to do things together, which is really great. Yeah. Yep. Um, and whether our employees like our team, whether they're part time or full time. Like we need every single person. Absolutely. And, um, it's, There's it's enough just work a delight for everybody. To work with everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and sorry, and then we have some contractors too, mm -hmm. which I think of as part of the team. You know, Erica here who is editing, um, she is not an employee, she's a contractor, but she's part of the team for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, as are our copywriters, we have two copywriters, Gretchen and Mary Claire, and they do a lot of the writing for our emails and blog posts and they're avid knitters themselves. And I'm sure there's lots more that I'm not thinking of right yeah. now, I'm sorry. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, and then I think we're only going to do a couple of these today. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments yeah. and we'll add them too. I think we'll just kind of add this as a little bit of I'll a I'll take a long bit. time to answer them. <laughs> um, and then the, the next one, which um, we can do kind of as quickly as possible. Sorry. Um, how it all started. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. Well, it basically started because my sister got married um, back home in Scotland and I went home for her wedding. But at the same time, that weekend, Edinburgh Yarn Festival was happening, and I hadn't been to it. I think it was 2016. And so I went to the Edinburgh Yarn Festival, then went up north to my sister's wedding. But at the Yarn Festival, I got to squish and sniff and buy all the yarn that I kept watching about on British uh, podcasts, but we didn't have available here. And so I was really excited to get to see this stuff in person. Then I brought a lot home. And then a little light bulb moment of, you know, if I like this stuff, I'm sure my friends would like it too. Maggie was one of those friends <laughs> and decided to bring some yarn over um, to see if my knitting buddies would like it. And uh, you guys did. And so that was start of the woolly thistle essentially not just your knitting buddies at that point you also had an audio podcast oh yes that's right my um new hampshire knits and uh i had a fair few uh uh people listening and so i started telling them that i wanted to do this and they came through for sure and started shopping and the woolly thistle gets its name from the thistle being scotland's national flower and you would often see tufts of wool caught in that because there's sheep everywhere as well in Scotland and so the woolly thistle just it came and it stayed I mean that just was a no-brainer it seemed and uh yeah so that that's how it all started I was I was my my son was finally old enough that he was going to kindergarten and I needed something to do those afternoons and that's uh, started in my spare bedroom moved over the garage then moved out and you know kept growing mm -hmm. yeah nice. and Maggie you've been along the way almost from the beginning uh, since you were over your garage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the garage, the garage. Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I came in fairly quickly. I had another job, um, and just a part-time job, and you were, you were, I could tell things were just picking up um, mm -hmm. where you were reaching that point where you had to be packing orders, but also had other stuff to do, and right. I had Fridays available, yeah. and I said, I can, I can 
come by. Yeah. You can just pay me in yarn. And I can come by and I'll just fill the orders. And it'd be so fun. Yeah. Um, and, and we did. And you did. You yeah. started coming in on Fridays. And I remember I was like, oh, now I get to pay bills. And I'd be paying bills or what have you. And you'd be like, what's next? What's next? And yeah. you were so fast at packing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it was great. You know, 80s music yes. blaring. Yes. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. And um, we grew quite a lot right there. Um, I think we we had other people start to show up to work mm -hmm. in the house. And I think that's when I realized that we needed to move out because... Because you needed more help. Yes, we yeah. needed more help. And I was sick and tired of having to keep the whole house clean to have people show up <laughs> to help me pack orders. And so we started looking and found the perfect little tiny place yeah. in an old mill. And that was our moving out of the house. And that was quite a life-changing moment because... For years, I'd worked either from home or been home with the kids. And now I was going back out of the house yeah. every morning. And it felt like a lot, but we did it. And of course, then COVID hit. So yeah, yeah not long after, maybe a year after of us moving out. But yes, that's yeah. how it all started. Love it. Love it. I love that this is part of, of my life and just, you know, watching it grow and trying to keep up with it. And um, I think having the team that we have is just part of its success. I could not do this myself ever. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's so much work, but it's great and it's enjoyable and it's fulfilling and great teamwork. So, yeah. Thank you for shopping with us, Absolutely. I have to say. Yeah. Um, so those are the questions we're going to answer today. Okay. If you have a question you want us to answer, just leave it in the comments. Yeah, I'm happy to answer all kinds of questions. And we'll try our best to get to it. Yes. So we did announce our second winner. We did. I think it's time for us to say goodbye. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's go over to uh, Rachel, who gets off the island, but does share quite a bit of what's happening um, over the first couple of months and the weather and all of that. And yeah, let's go on a trip with her. And um, we will see you next time. I think all that's left to say is, Maggie, if you go out, take your knitting. Bye. Hi, Willie Thistlers. It's Rachel from Barkland Croft here in Fair Isle. I hope you're all keeping well. I don't know about you, but January seemed to go on for ever and ever, whereas February seems to have passed by in the blink of an eye. It's been quite a busy month here, and I even managed a very short trip off Isle. So with the end of January marking the start of Up Helliar season in Shetland, here is a, a photo of the window of uh, Jameson and Smith in Shetland so it's showing some Up Helliar ready sheep. February didn't get off to a great start weather-wise. But that was the perfect excuse to stay indoors and get some knitting done with a bit of help from Scampi and Tortuga, of course. We have had a few days of blue skies and sunshine, and my indoor pots of rhubarb, mint and ivy are all showing new growth, which is very exciting. There's still no grass growth, however, and won't be for quite a while yet, so the sheep are still very appreciative of their haylage. On the 7th of February, we woke up to a light covering of snow. But even through the snow, you can see that the shoots of daffodils and some bluebells are finally starting to poke through and make an appearance. The following morning was absolutely glorious. We'd had a bit more snow overnight and although there wasn't a lot of snow on the ground, it was still hard, which made walking on it really a pleasure uh, as it wasn't thick mud for a change.
People are often surprised when I say that Fair Isle has two distinct microclimates and given that we're only three miles long, I know it sounds a bit far-fetched, but it really becomes evident when we have conditions such as snow and you'll often find that the north half of the isle in which I live gets a covering of snow and then the south half of the isle gets virtually none at all. Jason, who is Midnight and Busby's son, decided to come with me as I went round checking the fences and making no sheep were hiding behind the stone shelters. And you can see what an absolutely beautiful day it was. It really was one of those days where it's a delight to be outdoors. When we got back to the rest of the flock, they were busy saying hello to their next door neighbours in the next field. And here's a familiar face you might recognise. This is Seraph, who was our Sweet Blossoms lamb, although not a lamb anymore, a big boy now. The cats continued to help me with my knitting. And you can see the snow really didn't last very long at all this time. We got a lot of rain and it just vanished. Here you can see this is patchwork. And that's sunshine. This is Marigold, who's Patchwork's daughter. Tiny bit of snow still on the hills. I had a bit of a pancake fail on Shrove Tuesday, but it still tasted good. Walking down to meet the boat one afternoon, you can see just how well they're getting on with the bird observatory. The exterior's complete now, and they're working hard fitting the interior out. As a crofter, I'm a member of the Scottish Crofting Federation, which is an organisation that's dedicated to campaigning on behalf of crofters and fighting for the future of crofting. Earlier in February, they sent out a call for members to represent the organisation at the Scottish Parliament, taking part in workshops to discuss the draft Agriculture and Rural Communities Bill. As they would cover the travel and accommodation costs of participants, I put my name forward and was really excited that I was selected with about eight other crofters from across the Highlands and Islands regions to represent the SCF at Parliament in Edinburgh. Of course, it was sod's law that the day I was due to fly out of Fair Isle, we got our first proper fog of the year, so there were no flights all day. Luckily, the weather the following morning was much better, but there was a downside as when I went into the buyer, 
just look who I found in with my old girls and the year old lambs, Busby. So after congratulating myself at getting through the winter, having had no escapes from the sheep, keeping Busby out, he has defeated me yet again and now potentially I've got more lambs due this year. Once in Shetland, I visited Jameson's to look at their Valentine and Upheliar themed windows and even managed time for a coffee and cake at Mareel before heading down to the bus stop where there was a rainbow waiting for me and down to Sumbra to the airport. In the nine years that I've lived here, this was only the second time that I've actually flown out of Shetland. Normally I take the overnight ferry because it's much cheaper. I think one thing that surprises visitors to Shetland who travel by air is that the runway actually extends out into the sea and also that the main road actually runs across the runway. So they have a kind of traffic light system to stop the traffic crossing when there's a plane about to land or take off. I arrived in Edinburgh early that evening and got the bus from the airport into Edinburgh city centre. I even passed a thistle as I walked to my hotel. The following day I had a really enjoyable day around the city. This is the Scott Monument, there's the castle and here's Greyfriars Bobby. A lovely place to wander around is Greyfriars Kirkyard. By the afternoon it was quite sunny and I really enjoyed walking around Prince's Street Gardens and seeing the beautiful daffodils, snowdrops and crocuses that were already in bloom. And most importantly, I stocked up on my Percy Pig sweets. That evening, I enjoyed a really lovely concert at St Giles Cathedral. These are a real kind of hidden gem. They're free to attend, although you can make a donation if you wish, and they're on very, very frequently. So if you're ever in Edinburgh, keep a lookout for them. And that's St Giles itself. The following morning, I was off up and early to the Scottish Parliament. Very important start to the day, pastries and coffee. The workshop itself was really interesting and not nearly as daunting as I thought it might have been. As well as those of us representing crofters, there were also representatives from farming groups, um, estate managers, Scottish rural charities, owner occupiers and tenant farmers. We took part in round table discussions with members of the Scottish Parliament's Rural Affairs and Islands Committee, discussing different aspects of the proposed Agriculture and Rural Communities Bill and putting forward our recommendations for amendments or additions to this bill. After the workshop, the Scottish Crofting Federation joined fellow organisations in a demonstration at the Scottish Parliament to ask for a fairer agriculture bill. Although the bill calls for sustainable and regenerative agriculture and is aimed at enabling rural communities to thrive, it does little to oblige policymakers to realise the stated objectives. Instead, it continues to privilege large-scale industrial farming corporations and wealthy private landowners. Under the current system, most subsidies are awarded per hectare of land and based on land quality. So those with the most land and the best land receive the most money. In recent years, the bottom 40% of agricultural subsidy recipients received only 5% of the total agricultural budget, while the top 10% received half of it. 
for those with less than three hectares of land, so about 7.5 acres, they're not even entitled to any subsidies. The following morning I was up at four o'clock to walk back to the bus stop and get the bus up to Edinburgh Airport to fly back to Shetland. Sadly there wasn't much of a view outside as we flew home. This was about as good as it got. Thankfully the weather brightened once I was back in Shetland and I enjoyed seeing the lovely flowers starting to bloom in the park in Shetland. It's always lovely to get away but nice to be back home too and Ruffalo was very cross that I'd been on a, a road trip without her this time and so spent most of the next few days stuck to my knees. <laughs> We had a lovely rainbow and Sage very proudly announced that he was indeed the pot of gold at the end of it. The last few days of the month we've had very strong winds again and I felt so sorry for these poor crocuses who'd come up, bloom during the lovely sunny weather we had only to be battered down by the winds. We've also had a lot more rain and the ground really is just absolutely soaked through. Hopefully we'll get some sunshine soon and it'll all start to dry out and eventually we'll get some new grass growing. There are definitely signs of spring starting to appear though. You can see these tiny little green shoots popping up. So hopefully we're not too far off some better weather coming. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this little look at what's been happening in February. And I look forward to seeing you again next month. Bye bye.